the Studio Cuts Podcast with Taylor with WRRV. This is the Studio Cuts Podcast. Hey, it's Taylor from 92.7-96.9 WRRV. And the Studio Cuts Podcast is where we interview artists that were featured on Sunday Studio Cuts, our new music show on WRRV. Today, we're hanging out with Jesse Rutherford, who's the front man of the neighborhood. Where are you at right now? I'm at my studio in uh, in L.A. What's it like over there? I know COVID restrictions are kind of being lifted everywhere. Is there no mask mandate? Uh, I don't know. It's still kind of the same general vibe. Um, there's masks around, you know. I think it's like really now just like, I think more so doing it just to like, you know, like it represents something now, which yeah. isn't really I'm like good but it like you know there's an LA stigma about it so I feel like in certain areas if you're like not wearing a mask people will look at you like what are you doing but it's also like what do you mean what am I doing like the vaccine and like <laughs> we're outside and like I'm nowhere near you so I don't know but it's it's still weird enough yeah totally get that in New York they lifted the mask mandate but like everyone's still wearing it right so it's like well, then what do, what's, so now it's, <laughs> you know, just things mean different things than what they're actually supposed to, to mean, I feel like. And, sorry, I'm already getting too deep. Let's <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit to you that I saw the neighborhood in concert at Central Park in New York City like eight years ago, and I lost the concert shirt that I got there, and I am still distraught about it. That was a good one. That's when we that played with Danny so Brown. Good. Checkers around the border of the design. Yep. I, 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 yeah, I, you should be mad. That was a good shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I lost it, but I realized it when I was moving between apartments and I'm like, oh no, where is this? Uh, you know what? If I had another one, I would send it to you, but <laughs> I have one in my closet that I wore on the tour and like the sleeves are cut off and shit, but I can't get rid of any of that stuff. But you I know, wish that's I still- to keep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've dabbled in podcasting a little bit yourself. What was the idea behind the Patience podcast? Oh, sweet. You heard it. That's cool. Um, I mean, I'm still, I still might go back and fuck around with it again. Um, I mean, you know, something to do during, uh, pandemic and, um, also, you know, it's, I have those conversations with my friends all the time and, you know, a lot of people I'm around are, are artists. So I'm always interested in podcasts. I like podcasts. So, uh, I just wanted to try doing the thing that I, that I like. And, uh, so we've done it a couple of times. Uh, we actually tried filming some, I don't know what ever happened to those edits. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm in between a lot of things right now. I'm a bit all over the place. So, you know, yeah, we're figuring. The neighborhood had unbelievable success with their single sweater weather. How has the band grown since that track? Um, how we grown since that track? I mean, I mean, so many ways. I, it, it's I don't even know where to start. I mean, obviously, we've literally gotten older, and <laughs> we just know more shit now because that's just kind of what happens. You just end up knowing more shit, <laughs> um, and then you try to figure out how to utilize that and still not think too much. So I think that's maybe been. It's such a weird track because it's like that song was the first one we ever wrote, and it kind of gave us the world in a lot of ways right so like and in some ways it didn't but you know the illusion of that being so big and successful it definitely affected me and like fucked with my head and like altered I, I it took me a while to understand that the next one wasn't going to be as big or like the one after that or even maybe ever again or maybe it will but that's kind of like the beauty of it you just don't ever really know and um this last album that we did I would say was the first album where we completely didn't think about sweater weather during the creation of the album. But the other two before that, like the first three albums, that song is so big. It was kind of hard to not think about it at all times. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, it's, you know. <laughs> I got to ask who is Chip Crow? Uh, well, Chip is, I mean, I like to think uh, uh, of Chip as, as a mirror. 
kind of first and foremost. So ideally it's, uh, you know, I think creating the character, it was like, it almost felt like it, it, two things for me. It almost felt like it was a silver lining for me personally, like Jesse Rutherford, this version that you see has just been kind of like worn down and like chip in one way was kind of like my silver lining that I think helped me to like do this whole thing again and to like have fun with it and to want to believe it and to like try hard for it. And then I think hopefully for other people, you know, chip can serve as a bit of a mirror. And even if you watch like the music videos and stuff, it's funny. I, I had an interview yesterday and the dude interviewing me was like, he's like, yeah, man, you know, I was watching that stargazing video and like, I can't help but to like feel like I somehow relate to Chip. And I was like, <laughs> great. I mean, that's always the goal, I think, for any artist to be like, you know, you want to write stuff people relate to. Um, I don't know. I think, yeah, everybody could probably relate to the idea of Chip one way or another, especially if you live on the internet like a lot of us do now. You know what I mean? And yeah. like the idea of like wanting to shine and wanting to be noticed and wanting to, you know, be loved and have attention and, and also wanting to give that love and, and, and energy and have it reciprocated, have it feel like it's being captured by somebody. Do you know what I mean? Like energy reciprocation is a, is a huge thing for me. Like you could be giving it all out, but if you don't feel like you're getting it at all back, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to continue to be, to be really positive, but you know, something that I think I have to work on every day because you don't always get it back, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And the album, Chip Chrome and the Monotones, was originally supposed to be called something different. What was the original name and why did it change? Um, how'd you know that? Did I say that before? At some <laughs> time? But, I did my uh, research. Yeah, I mean, you know, usually while we're writing an album, there's always like a couple titles that are floating around, album art ideas, concepts like you know i'm always tapping in on that like from day one that was like always something i've been really interested in from like back in the day with black and white and the logo and the merch and fonts and all that kind of stuff so this album for a while we were going to call it tobacco sunburst which ended up being a, a song title on the album one of the last songs on the record um yeah so it was going to be called tobacco sunburst but then it turned into chip once chip pretty much showed up and stole the show. So, yeah. The single that's out right now, Stargazing, what is this song about? Um, well, it's funny. When we, so we wrote the song because we were asked to write a song for a video game, for like a, a uh -huh. racing video game. So we just got in the studio one day and like kind of did that pretty quickly for us at least. But we did it in like a day. We did that song in like an afternoon. And I kind of just wrote the lyrics on the spot, like while I was up at the mic and just kind of thinking to myself, all right, you're in a car game, you're driving, like pull it out of park, put it in drive. Like, like I was being pretty like literal with a lot of the lyrics, but I think the hook mainly alludes to this idea. And it's kind of a look back at, at the experience we've gotten to have as a band um, and as a group of friends and kind of be like, whoa, dude, like, it's crazy. Like ended up, ended up out here, like in Hollywood with the stars, you know what I mean? Like mm. stargazing, like feeling like you don't really fit in, but like, you're still, you're still here. Like you made it to space somehow, but space is giant and there's like planets and fucking bright stars all around. And even if you are one of them, you, you can't, sometimes it's hard to tell, you know what I mean? Cause you're just getting the perspective of this landscape of all these other stars and these fucking constellations and all these big things happening around you. And, I think sometimes I feel like a bit of an imposter doing what I do, doing what we do. So I think it maybe has to do with that a little bit too. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Are there any plans to tour this year? Are you guys going to be part of any festivals? Uh, tour, yeah, for sure. Um, I don't think festivals this year. We're kind of like, usually the way that works is like, we because 2020 happened and then like we put out the record, I think they're honoring a lot of people's slots from the years before too. So I don't yeah. even think it was a thing for us to even think about or for festival to think about us this year. So probably we'll pick that vibe up like 2022 or three or something, but no, but, but some touring for sure. Yeah. Like 
some sick shows. I, I don't want to say it yet, but we're about to announce some shit. And I'm, I'm fucking stoked, Ooh. obviously. Hopefully I can get a concert shirt again. <laughs> Let's go. I know. All right. My last question for you. If someone were to come to your city, what is the one thing they need to do? Uh, well, okay. So we're from a smaller town outside of LA called um, Newbury Park. And uh, really not too much to do there, <laughs> to be honest, but it's definitely not LA. It's very spread out, very beautiful, like, you know, some hills and some more nature, nature mm -hmm. um, and pretty trees. I think if you, I mean, if you were to like, I mean, it's just like a fucking little town off a freeway, like anything else. It's not that big of a deal, but it's pretty. And I would say if you go to Newberry, uh, I'm trying to think of like a classic thing to do there. Stop at Tony's Pizza. I mean, it's okay. But <laughs> it's good. But like, I don't know. Just drive. There's a bunch of parks and stuff. Go to a beautiful park and just play some basketball or fucking, I don't know, write a song. But, <laughs> I think that's a great thing to do. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jesse, for hanging out with me and the Studio Cuts podcast. Of course. Thanks so much for having me. Make sure to check out Stargazing by The Neighborhood and see them live at Forest Hill Stadium in Queens this October. And don't forget to catch Sunday Studio Cuts, a new music show featuring all of the up-and-coming alternative music hosted by me every Sunday at 10 p.m. on 92.7, 96.9, WRRV. Join us next week as we interview another up-and-coming alternative artist on the Studio Cuts podcast.